So I figured this was actually going to start off with a bang, and of course it did. It really, really did. Let's get going, honey. There's three parts to this mess, so let's get going. Oh. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season five of Married to Medicine. This is the reunion, and this is part one of three. So we're gonna see. I figured we would start off with a bang. Generally, it gets a little dry in the middle, and then it usually gets okay at the end, but we'll see. So starting off, Contessa. Contessa, she didn't got her a stylist. Okay. Um, we have seen Contessa in jumpsuits. She likes jumpsuits. She's tall, so it works. But she then got her. She then went on to the Angel Brinks jumpsuit line at this point, I guess. I don't know if it's an Angel Brinks, actually, but it's that whole feel. So she has the, the black beaded jumpsuit with the black caged beaded pump. And I'm like, okay, Contessa, she's looking age appropriate. Now, the thing that I'm going to give her um, props for is she bought her a piece of hair. I liked her hair. Her hair was much better. She has a head full of hair, but it's not, it, it just, it's not a good head of hair. It's just she has a head full of hair, and it's too thin, you know, for some of what she does with it and that kind of thing. So, her hair is usually kind of just off, but she got her a wig, and the wig was nice, you know, middle part, where it had a body wave. She looked really good. Her makeup looked good. She looked basically the best that she's looked. So it was cool. I was like, all right, Contessa, you you, you, you showed out for the reunion. Um, quad. Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. And though you look nice. You always look nice. So, you know, and that's that's where part of the problem is, that you always look nice. But you're out of place. You're out of place. She did the whole uh, nude bodysuit again, and it was very Angel Breaks. And that was where my problem came in. It was very much... There was a love and hip-hop reference that I'm going to talk about later on. But Quad's... Uh, cat suit was very much basketball wives and that no 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 I mean you can't read the look because it's the fit is per it was a perfect fit very pretty jumpsuit pretty pumps all of that but this is just not I don't know what this this mood is. You're in a strange place, my girl. You're in a strange, strange place, and I don't know. I don't know what we're seeing here. Um, this is just out of character. Is all. It, it's just the wrong show, the wrong outfit. Again, styled to perfection. You know, hair and all. But I wasn't using any of it for this. For where we're at, Jackie. Jackie looked very nice, but Jackie, you don't look like you're coming to reunion. You look like you're on your way to do press junkets. You know, she 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 was dressed. She had a very nice pantsuit on. That was good for the press when the shows get ready to come on and you're interviewing. You know, that's what that was good for. That was good to go sit on um, The View or to go sit on The Real or one of those little shows or to chew, or to talk, or something like that. It wasn't good for where we were. Mariah, um, usually, um, Mariah usually shows up, shows out for the reunions. Boring. It was boring. Her hair wasn't raggedy like it usually be, but I still think you buying cheap hair. 
I think you're buying cheap hair, but the one good thing, because with the color that you wear, I think you buy cheap hair, and then I think that they don't put enough product in it. They're starting to put a little bit of grease in your hair, so it was a little bit better. You wasn't giving me tumbleweeds, scarecrow tees, but there's still some work to be done on the hair, but it looks better than it usually does. Um, your dress was just, you were boring. You were boring, and that's really out of character for you, too. It's usually that bitch, you, that bitch usually have a bad pop. It's usually have one something real, real groovy. But it was just boring. It wasn't bad, but it was just boring. Heavenly looked nice for Heavenly. It was um an interesting dress. Somebody else, I know you didn't pick that Heavenly. You wouldn't have did that well. It was, it was nice. It was nice. You weren't overdone. You weren't underdone. You looked nice. You looked nice. Everything, her hair, her makeup, everything. She looked nice. Um, Toya. You look good. Toya looked good. Toya looked like Toya. She really did. You know, it was a cute, like, little princess type of situation going on. Yeah, she's short. It, it was cute. She looked really nice. Now, Simone, Miss Simone, bitch, you showed up and showed out a little taste. Now, what I will say is it's all in the design. I love everything you had on. I loved your hair. I loved your makeup. I loved everything you had on. The only thing I didn't like, I didn't like the way the sleeve was designed on your shirt. The sleeve was giving me um, Lord of the Rings tees. But beyond that, if it had just been a regular old cap sleeve, I loved it. I loved the color combination. I loved, I said, look at her sitting up there, baby. She had her waist snatched. They couldn't read you, bitch. They couldn't read you. I didn't like that sleeve. But you were together, bitch. That's, this is definitely goes on the books as one of Simone's better looks. You look good, bitch. You sure did. Okay, so let's move on. Um, Just some things that just got thrown out. Because, you know, this is the first part. So this shit just was being thrown out. Heavenly Track Daddy. That bitch sat right on there and admitted to try. How long have you been with Daddy? 20 years. How old is your oldest child? 20. I don't want you to be like I would say. I want these young girls to be like I would, you know, because you know how girls will do shit about her son being off in college and what she had to tell. I know what I did. Yeah, bitch, she trapped her doctor. I said, come on through, truth. That's all right. Come on, truth. <laughs> she trapped daddy's ass. I said, I ain't mad with you. <laughs> but you said, I got one shot at this child. I'm a fat bitch. He a fat motherfucker. I got one shot at this. Come on and get this coochie out of here and knock me up, and we're going to be together forever. <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving on. We talked about Miss Renee. Talk about a case of misplaced anger, honey. I said, oh, Contessa. Contessa, you were doing a whole lot. She was upset and blamed the situation that happened with Miss Renee on classism coming from the group and the group did not like it. Simone got up in her feelings, baby, and sat up just as tight on that couch and was like, she's blaming us for classism. And I said, uh-huh. And Mariah came through and I, I actually agreed with Mariah for a change. And Mariah said, are you kidding? Everybody, us, the viewers, everybody got upset with Miss Renee because of the way she treats you. And you're mad at us? I said, I know that's right, Mariah. I cuss her ass on out, and I'll be behind you this time because you're right. That was cra That was stone cold crazy. That I said, Contessa sound like she a Scorpio. You know, Scorpios do shit like that. They get some shit in their head and be totally wrong, and they just gonna ride out with it, and ain't nothing you can tell them. That sounds like some Scorpio shit. But anyway, um. Yeah, that was just stupid. I was like, mm -mm, displace anger. And the other thing that I noticed about Contessa, Contessa, you are a judgmental motherfucker. Oh, my God. I was just looking at the camera because the camera didn't do you any favors. When different things were being talked about, they kept flashing you. And, girl, you, your face was telling it all. You are judgmental as hell. When the camera flashed, when they were talking about little Michael, Simone's little boy, her youngest, and him, and the, when he would say he likes white girls, you know, Honey Contessa's face was all twisted and turned up. Honey, people like who they like. There's no problem with it. I'm the, the only thing, Simone, you got to protect your child. We, we've already been through this. 
this ain't the time of the place. You don't want to say this on social media. Your social media is going to attack you. And the older he get, he need to know not to make those statements. Some things you need to keep to yourself. But if that's what Michael likes, that's what Michael likes. And there's nothing wrong with Michael liking white girls, Contessa. And you got a whole slew of kids coming. So you don't know who they're going to like, honey. Your girls, I think you got girls and a boy. Girl, you got to watch out for white boys and girls. Because guess what? There's cute white boys and girls, too. And they will infiltrate your house. And don't ever think that a white boy won't turn your daughter up and tear her black little cuckoo up, honey, and be in your house smiling and grinning. And we'll see if you turn your face up then. Because it's real, your face will really be turned up when you have some half black and half white uh, grandbabies. Honey, so don't, don't speak so quick. People are people. Period. You talk about classism. Stop this colorism shit. People like who they like. They fall in love with who they like. And your children or your children, you can't, you know, you can you can give them something, but you can't guide people. The heart wants what it wants. The ding dong and the cuckoo wants what it wants, honey. So watch yourself with that. Then you were ugly again when it came to Toya. There's a little situation with Toya and that party of hers. And, you know, we kind of talked about that a little bit, too. You was going in about her paying, you know, the bill, their, them, their blackout party out of, the, out of the black party or into the black party, whatever it was, party. And my thing was, you're still hanging on to this, how stupid of an idea it was for them to give a party. My thing is, it's okay. Again, it's okay to feel however you feel. But were you wrong at? Why the fuck were you there, bitch? If you felt that strongly that it was that stupid of an idea for Eugene and Toya to throw that party, I feel as though you should have stayed the fuck home. Because if you're not happy for me, why are you at a party with a party of mine where I'm celebrating? You bringing some negative bullshit. That's like coming to a birthday party and saying you don't want the person to have a happy birthday. Because that's the energy that you brought. And I don't want a bitch that don't want me to have a happy birthday sitting there singing happy birthday to me and blowing out candles and licking my cake off her fingers. I really don't. And I just feel like with all that you said in your confessionals and all that you said right there to their faces, you should have never had your black ass at that party at all because you weren't happy for them. So what were you there for? You, well, you tried to get a little shit started. You were there for all the wrong reasons. You're a judgmental old hoe, but that's okay. I still like you, but you're a judgmental old Yes, you are. Anyway, moving on. Andy. Really? Andy turned around there and said, you know, the job of a wife is to be there, be her, hus be her husband's everything, and Toya said, yeah, I'm, I'm Eugene. I'm his everything. She liked to think she is. Um, I'm not so sure when they actually had the whole conversation about her giving blowjobs and she was talking too much and too fast and they stopped her. And she was going on to about, well, I don't do a good job giving him one. Well, honey, who else is you doing it to? Who else are you giving blowjobs to who is satisfied, honey? Pool boy? Guy to cut the grass? Next door neighbor? Guy from the Target? Who is it, honey? Whose dick are you sucking, bitch? Got our good eye on you, Toya, bitch. Told you we don't trust you. I don't trust you. All the Myers that Eugene was working, and he is down there playing Turbo Fist, Pee Wee Herman, honey. I don't trust you, bitch. You was talking too fast, and they slowed you down and stopped you. But anyway, Andy swung that question back around and says, well, you know what? There was a question somebody wrote in. It says, do you think that Quad is being Gregory's everything. And he posed a question to Toya. Messy, 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 Andy Bravo bitch. And Toya bought the bait. She like me. She ain't plead the fifth. She went on and said what she had to say. Then gonna turn around, bring it right back around to this baby thing, which y'all know y'all getting on my nerves with this baby thing. The, the should she have a baby? Just go ahead and have a baby now. Go ahead, baby. And then fuck it. Then y'all have something else to talk about. Why she bring a baby into that fucked up relationship? Whatever. Anyway, um, it was very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable because when Toya went in and answered the question, Quad looked at her like, bitch, and I done told you before. 
I done already told you before, bitch, that I'm not going to talk to you. Now, you keep on playing these games, bitch, I'm going to cut your ass off at the knees up underneath that funny dress. Keep on playing. I said, ooh, she did. It was very uncomfortable. And Quad's face truly said, you will pay, bitch. You'll pay before we leave out of here. You're going to pay. And I got a feeling before we get out of here, she's going to get at that toy ass some way, shape, or form. She's going to get back at her. But anyway, we'll see. Um, Toya and this whole thing about her having weight issues. Well, we've seen that. We could see, you know, before, if you look at pictures from before, Toya was heavy. She was a heavy girl and she was small. Then, you know, she keeps, she'd be looking nice at her stuff. But there was times in this season that I've even mentioned, I'm like, Toya gained weight. She better not be pregnant. So now we know that she struggles with weight. And she, um, that all led into the whole Heavenly story and how mean Heavenly is. And Heavenly is, Heavenly is a mean motherfucking demon is what she is. She really, really is. Heavenly's mean as hell. Oh, there ain't no way to get around it. She can sit with Jewel Tankard as much as she want. she do anything she want. She is mean-spirited. I don't know very much about her boys because God knows that one, the one that's in college looks exactly like Heavenly. He's like a good version of her and daddy put together. He, he's not bad looking. Um, same thing with Allura. Allura looks like a, a mix of the two of them. Um, I don't know what the personality is like or really on the boys. They seem okay, but that Allura is mean as hell too. Allura got a mean streak in her as well and very unapologetic. The same as Heavenly. Heavenly is mean. She's mean spirited. She thinks it's cute to say whatever it is you want to say. And she's not apologetic. She's not sorry about anything she says because she just goes ahead and sometimes she lets you know she's not sorry. And then other times she just does shit again. After she's corrected, she goes back and does shit again. That's a bitch that's not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Shout out to Demi Lovato. <laughs> okay. She sat right there just as good. When Toya broke that shit down about her um, having an eating disorder and all of this kind of stuff, which I think was a real big cop out because people who actually have eating disorders, they actually, they generally go ahead and tell you that and they call it by its name. It's bulimia or whatever, whatever their little situation is. They call it by the toy say, I, um, I used to throw up my food. What is that called? You a classy bitch. What's it called? I would even took purge and binge. I'd have took that, but I wouldn't have took. I, I throw up my food, girl. I, you, you, girl, fishing, fishing for sympathy, but whatever. But um, Heavenly was still over, and she didn't give a fuck what she was talking about. She didn't care. And then she had there where she made the comment, "Y'all in this heavy shit." <coughs> well, maybe I just want to make no jokes. <coughs> what kind of shit is that? That was the place for an apology to go in. Not, I just won't make no jokes. Because you're not sorry. Because you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck about their feelings at all. You mean all that nasty shit that you say. You old nasty square head bitch. It is what it is. Okay, so um, this next part is going to be so, as Mariah said herself, delicious. All of you all that I've had these issues with that just love to tell, spend more time in your video talking about the video and not talking to us about Mariah. Don't tell me what the fuck to talk about on my video when I'm talking to you. You came to watch me. So whatever it is I say, you fucking sit there and you listen or you click it off. Those are your only two choices. You listen or you click it off, but you don't tell me what to say in my video. Got it? Good. Now, all of you all to say, oh, you're so mean and you just, just hate Mariah. And it's a, did Mariah not stand out there with her dirty slip showing? Her dirty motherfucking slip was showing for all of you to see. And I can't wait to see in the comments what you all have to say this time. I want to see what clever ways that you all, Mariah stands, are going to try to Olivia Pope this and swing this around. Mariah's ass was hanging out. Her drawers and her slip was dirty. You understand? She got busted in telling her lies. 
She got busted where they busted out and they showed her in these Facebook lives. You know, I say I'm having the Facebook lives with her and shoot Lucy and old frozen lake was sitting around talking about the girls. And then they talked about all the shit about shoot Lucy and all that bullshit. She'd be doing all that shit. She'd be saying about people and all of that because they was calling herself getting at heavenly's ass she tried to put everybody on heavenly like she does she's manipulating the floor putting everybody up to put up to hate up heavenly she talks about my mother this that and the other and then they said hey your mother ain't no motherfucking saint your mother is horrible and see i ain't never had a problem with heavenly talk about shoot lucy somebody needs to talk about shoot lucy somebody need to kick her cane from up underneath for her push her the fuck down by the back of her motherfucking head ugh, ugh, bitch Cause shoot Lucy is a hot mess. And I still I'll never forget one, her busted toy in the head with the back of the head with that motherfucking purse. That was a mess. That was out of order. You and your mom be jumping people. Two, when they were at the party for Mother's Day, and they said all of the people who have lost their mothers, they had the candles. So Heavenly never said it on the show, but she was over there with a candle. So I'm taking for granted that Heavenly's mother must have passed on to the other side, honey. She's over there with a candle. And that motherfucking, that goddamn shoot Lucy, she knows that. And when she sat on that live on Facebook and said, Heavenly needs a mother's love and she's never going to be able to get it. That was some nasty, mean, old, ratchet ass shit. So anything, Mariah, that anybody ever does or says about your mammy, she fucking deserves because your mother is a nasty, vile, goddamn gutter snipe. And you're just like her. You and your sister Frozen Lake. Y'all some raggedy motherfuckers. And I was loving it. And Quad got back to her and told you, I uh -uh, see, because what I don't do, I don't sit up on no 45-minute symposium and drag your ass, but this is what you do. And then you sit over here and cry like everybody's doing something to you, bitch, but you all up in the dirt, honey. Just a slithering snake, honey. I said, oh, girl, your dirty panties and slippers showing, Miss Mariah, and it's starting to smell up the place, honey. I want to see how y'all going to try to Olivia Pope that. Did y'all see it? I know y'all seen it. I know you seen it, honey. And then she did what Mariah does. She started with the loud shit, and she started trying to overtalk heavily. And she started trying to overtalk quad. And the reason she did that, peep this. The reason she did it is because she knows. She knows it. Kenya knows it. Nene knows it. All of these people, they're very crafty. They know when you, when it gets to a point where somebody's exposing you during a reunion, Bravo Andy, all you got to do is start over talking people. Over talking and screaming loud. Teresa knows, Teresa, Judy Chase, you know. Start hollering. And then Andy is going to stop the argument and he's going to move on, which stops them from being able to drag you and, uh, and ultimately expose you. Mariah knew exactly what she was doing. Exactly what she was doing. She did it so good that Andy broke all the way for lunch. Did y'all catch it? Did you want it? Olivia poked at y'all. Anyway, moving on. So there was they laughed at in the very, very beginning this whole poster. Mariah had a whole poster of herself on her door. I said, this bitch. And that motherfucker heavily come down the damn hallway and draws a mustache and some goddamn horns on. It was petty. It was petty, but it was most definitely heavily. Just to get a rise out of Mariah. And honey, why she do that? She, that Mariah went to crying and screaming and yelling and carrying on. She was the victim now. Oh, she played it to a bust. She carried on. She carried on. And then she ran all out in the hall like she was bad, honey, and heavily was coming down that hall. Did you see her ass jump on back there, honey? And Quad got in the middle, and then her, her little team came flying out, and the gays were all upset. They were mad. Why don't you go back? She's just a kid. She's a child. I said, girl, if you don't wrangle up your sissies, honey, and take them on back in the room, girl, and y'all shut the hell up in there, honey. Stop it. She tried to Olivia Pope the situation, honey. And it was what it was. We get you. And then she she's so upset. She didn't come back out on set. Bye, Mariah, bitch. And then the other thing that I'm noticing, the more we go by, 
Aiden, I'm starting not to like you at all because you just play right into the shit. You know your wife is full of shit and you just play right into the shit with her. You're just as bitchy as she is. Go sit down, Aiden, whore. Anyway, Lula, is you mad or? Okay, they come back, everybody except for Mariah and her crying ass. And Simone starts to tell them about her divorce. She let out there that she actually, her and Cecil, they were doing good, but then they switched up and nobody really knew. She, you know, they they had broken up, they separated. She filed for a divorce, and a divorce would be done in about two weeks. And then we actually got an actual real moment out of heavenly. That shit broke heavenly. Because I believe she truly, I believe deep down, truly heavenly really, heavenly really likes Quad and she really likes Simone. And everybody on the cast really is rooting for Cecil and Simone. And that thing right there just broke heavenly. I felt bad for her. I felt more, more bad for Heavenly than I did for Cecil and Simone. Shit, they getting what they want. But yeah, that thing broke Heavenly. She wasn't ready for that. She wasn't ready for that. I didn't pay Quad no attention. You know Quad's soft. She's you know, she's a softie and she got enough shit going on with old Gregory to last her a long time. So that broke all that. Now I told you I was going to there was a love and hip hop reference that I was gonna make. That motherfucker Mariah brought her stinking ass out there in that hallway when they was arguing her and him. She's on here acting like she's from love and hip hop. This ain't love and hip hop. We don't do all that. I said, What? This ain't love and hip hop. We don't do all that. Don't do all what, baby, because I believe. I believe. See, I've been watching this shit since the first day you aired the first show. It ain't never missed a show, bitch. I done seen them all. I seen them all, bitch. You got popular. Married to Medicine made it on Bravo. Sheerly on the strength of the fight between Toya and goddamn Mariah and Shoot Lucy jumping in. That was the, the beginnings of the show. That's why the show made it. That was y'all sticking factor that you all made it on to Bravo as a staple because of that fight. Say what you want. That's why we kept watching. That was anytime you talked about marriage to medicine, ain't nobody know all of y'all's practices and didn't know all your husband's names or none of that shit. But we knew that bitch, them two black bitches was fighting out there at that pool at that white woman's house and the cops had to come. Everybody knew about that. That was what got y'all the beginning of what got you where you were. And then what solidified your stay on Bravo was when Mariah and Quad fell out and they fought and argued. That solidified the stay. And then when you needed to beef up the ratings one more time, Lisa, Nicole, and Quad down there slinging, slinging water and Lisa falling on the floor and then Quad coming back with the bandage on her face. Child, all this physical altercation and all this dramatic outburst is why you're here. Bitch, well, what tells you that you all are better than Love and Hip Hop? You're not. You're not better than Love and Hip Hop. And for the record, Mariah, bitch, you wish you were Mona Scott Young, okay? You wish you were. Even on Mona's goddamn... <laughs> on her radar or anywhere near on the level that Mona's on. Girl, sit your ass down with that shady bullshit. And that there was some classism shit for your ass right there. Loving hip hop. I said, no, you didn't. You should be so lucky for y'all shit to be like loving hip hop. Loving hip hop ain't never lost a day. Bravo shipped y'all's ass from Sunday over to Friday. And we praying that y'all don't fuck up. Love and hip hop ain't never been nothing but Monday. So slow your roll, sis. Slow your roll. Get on, and you know, much as we cuss Mona out, get up off of Mona's motherfucking back, cause you out of order, bitch. Anyway, anyway. Moving on. That's it for part one of the reunion. It was really good. Really good. We're gonna see what part two is given. There's a lot more ground to cover with this. We ain't really got nowhere yet. So I, I'm thinking it might be the, the one time that I'm hoping all three pieces are good, but it just never happened. I've never seen a three part that was all good, but we're going to see. We're going to see. We'll see what y'all got. 
I'm a fan till the end, no matter where it goes. If y'all go on the WQED, honey, I'll be on there watching you. It is just Channel 13, child, but <laughs> with the kids' programs. But I'll, I'll be watching. But, Mariah, don't, you, don't try it with Mona no more here, bitch. All right, later.